In this tutorial in Cyberlink, in this tutorial in Cyberlink PowerDirector, we're going to show you two ways in which you can apply speech bubbles to your project. Now this applies if you're a subscriber to PowerDirector 365 because they just released an update that gives you a second method. We're going to show you both methods and compare and contrast the advantages and the disadvantages of both of them side by side. Please look at the following example. The first example you saw, we were using the older way in which we can do this. And I have always found that a bit confusing because I think of a speech bubble as text, but up until now, it wasn't found in the text box. So let's do it the old way and then we'll show you the new way and contrast the pluses and minuses. We're going to click on the PIP objects room and it's, I'm going to go from my all, all of my content and I'm going to go to the callout pack. That's where the speech bubbles traditionally have been found. And I'm going to go down to callout 42 and I'm using this one because it's similar to something we have in the new version. I'll take and drag and drop it down. I have a timeline marker here and I'll put it in track number two. And then we're going to double click on it so we can do some editing inside it. Uh, first of all, let's move the title and we're going to move the little arrow going to someone. Then we'll double click on it and we can we can edit the text. Now one thing you'll find is the the ability to modify this is a lot better than the new version. We'll do the same one. Is that a bear? And it works pretty good. We can change a few features, the, the shape type, the shape outline. Right now it has a purple on it. I don't like the purple. Um, let's do, oh, the shadow's purple. Let's change that to something else. I'm going to actually use the little color picker and we'll pick one of the greens here in the background and click on OK. All right, I like that a little better. But there's a simple example of doing it. You have pretty decent ability to edit the text. Uh, you can change where the little marker comes out to point where the sound comes from. Using this, the, this same shape, I could put it on the right side and, and orient this all the way around 180 degrees if I wanted to. But we'll leave it about like that. And so that's an example of the, the traditional way in which we can apply that. So I've got that on my, my timeline, much like in the example you saw a few moments ago. So here's someone is saying, is that a bear? Now let's look at the new way in which we can do that. Let's go instead to the title room. And in the title room, we have a new subset of titles. I'll scroll down to those. And the new one are called speech bubble titles. Now there's some additional features of them that you may or may not like, and there's some limitations. First of all, you can't change the, the place where this uh, extruded area comes from. So now I have to pick one. If I'm going to put one in about the same place where it comes in from the right or upper right or lower right or something like that. And so I'm going to pick this one here because we have it stretching out on this side and I'll put it on my timeline marker. Now you notice when I drag it in, there's something different on the timeline. You notice it has an audio track to it. Now you can use the audio or you can dispense with the audio. Another thing about it is that this actually uh, does motion. It has a built-in motion. We'll look at that in a moment. So let's double click on that and here we get into our title designer for this. And so I'm going to move it best I can. I can enlarge it or shrink it. I can change the uh, proportions of it a little bit. I don't have quite as much flexibility when it comes to editing. I can change the font. It doesn't seem to be quite as flexible as the former method. It's often easier to actually edit it up in the box in the upper left corner. I'll just say is that a bear question mark and I can independently change the size of the text I can change the font bold or italic but I can't change the 
the size of the text in relationship to the shape. I can also change the colors. I want it to be similar to the other one in color. So let's click on graphic colors. And here we have the three shades. And so let's try to pick some in the orange range. I'll pick a, maybe a dark orange for that one. And we'll go in, in group number two. And again, it's hard for me to tell which group is which color, to be honest. So let's pick a light one here. All right, and then we'll try something in the more standard orange here. And so it's a little bit similar uh, to the other one. So this is what I have. I can change the text. I can change the scale a little bit, the position. So maybe I want it a little bit smaller, a little bit higher. That's a little better. That's what I can do with the second one. I'll click on OK. The other thing you're going to notice when we play this is the first one basically is static. Let's play that and you can see that part. OK. All right, now the second one, you're going to notice there's going to be some animation with it. Watch what happens carefully on the screen, please. You see it pops in and out, and you have these little lines that, that surface and show. There you go. There's also an audio. And the audio is there is so that it, it kind of adds a little bit to it. Now, I, I personally am not really fond of all these sounds that you have in, in these speech bubbles that are in the subset. So if you don't want to use the speech bubble, what can you do? Well, you right click on it and you, you say extract sound from template. Now, there's my sound and there's where it's positioned in the template because it also matches the graphic animation. So if you want a sound, that's kind of where you want it. You can replace it with a different sound. And if I were to do that, you know, I would go to this location and I would add myself a timeline marker here. So I'll just call this sound. And now I know where I want the sound to be if I want to add a sound. If I don't want the sound at all, I can simply uh, highlight the soundtrack and press the delete key and it goes away. So I have a uh, an a non-audible title that's also animated that I can edit to some degree. In this case, I'm going to leave the sound out. I think this one is a little hope. And a different sound comes with a different object. You'll notice that it, it has a sound if you have the little speaker in the lower left corner of the icon. And currently, these are the only icons we have in PowerDirector with this new feature that, that have that. So this is an example of how you can use a speech bubble using a pip object and then this new title that's available to owners of PowerDirector 365.